this is how many DLCs we have had across every single LEGO game. So let's take a look at the top 10 worst DLCs. Cue the music. Starting at number 10 is a DLC you most likely have never ever heard about or didn't even know existed. So who's ready for that hot tub party? It is LEGO Star Wars characters from LEGO Star Wars the original trilogy. Yeah, if you didn't know, this is actually the first ever LEGO game to feature DLC. The pack includes a total of 46 characters, which is the same amount as LEGO Batman 1's character roster. But I do have to be honest here, what is the point of this DLC? Especially now because you can just simply play the complete saga unless you love the retro look of LEGO Star Wars 2, as the two games do look completely different. Basically, the DLC allows you to play all of the prequel characters in the original trilogy, however it is slightly annoying how you cannot play as the DLC characters in the hub world. I do have to admit I prefer the cantina in LEGO Star Wars 2 over the cantina in the complete saga. And actually, please let me know down below which one you prefer. <sighs> Even then, if you wanted to play as the characters in a level, you only get to play that one selected character. Meaning, if you wanted to play as any of the other DLC characters, you literally have to quit the level and load back in as one selected character at a time. I mean, fair enough, the DLC is $1, and I don't think it is that bad of a DLC, I just don't see the point in it anymore with having the complete saga. Now, 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 I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. There is a way to get this DLC for free, however, if you have a save file from LEGO Star Wars 1 the video game on your console, you can activate the red brick, use old save, which will give you the DLC. At number 9, actually, I'll have two number 9s and a Number nine large, time to call Superman. Not going to call Superman. What about Shazam Batman? We have the hero and villain pack from Lego Batman 2. I am aware a lot of people didn't even know LEGO Batman 2 had DLC, and both DLCs are extremely difficult to get a hold of. Also, as we progress through the list, the worse the DLCs become. The hero pack includes Robin, Damian, Wayne, Nightwing, who I am shocked never made it into the base game. Then you have Katana, Zatanna, and Shazam! I had to do it. Robin, Damian, Wayne, as expected, is just simply a reskin. I do appreciate, though, how you can still use Robin suits as this variation. And did you know Nightwing can also equip Robin suits too, but for some reason the animation for swapping suits doesn't work correctly? Katana swings a Katana, then there is Zatanna, who is extremely disappointing. All she really does is fly. She's a lot better in LEGO Batman 3. Shazam, seriously, is the saving grace of this pack. When I was a kid, this character was so amazing to me, with electricity pulsing around his body. Oh. The sad reality is Shazam isn't that good in this game, apart from looking good. He cannot even use electrical terminals. He even gets a shock from them. You are literally a walking battery, mate. How does that happen? Again, you might as well stick with Superman, and it gets even worse in a way, as you cannot use your DLC characters in the open world until you complete all 15 main story missions. The villain pack is equally just as bad. You get Bizarro, who was lazily done. He is meant to be the opposite of Superman, so he should have heat breath and ice vision. I am so glad they fixed this in LEGO Batman 3. Black Adam is the exact same as Shazam, apart from his menacing stance. Then there is Captain Cold and Gorilla Grodd. Oh, he is terrible. Especially when you compare him to Gorilla Grodd in LEGO DC supervillains. Now, I am aware this was before big characters made their way into LEGO games, but Gorilla Grodd doesn't even have telekinetic powers. He is seriously on par with Absorbing Man from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1 for being some of the most disappointing LEGO game characters. Do not even get me started on Black Manta. He just slaps people with fish. 
fish. I really am struggling to pick which DLC from these two is the worst. So I am going to have to go with both of them here as there wasn't anything special in these DLCs and as we get further through the list, it makes these DLCs look good. Swooping on over to number 8, do you know the saying, why does everyone want to go back to Jakku? Well, why would anyone want to pay to go back? We have Poe's Quest for Survival DLC from LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh yeah, hello, hello, hello there guys, I am Rugged Eagle and if you love LEGO games, why not subscribe down below and if you are enjoying the video, a like would mean the world to me, thank you so much. This may surprise a few of you, but LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is my least favourite LEGO game, especially after the release of the Skywalker song. This isn't me saying LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is a bad LEGO game, it is not. Overall, the game has a great selection of DLCs and I'll even argue it is better than the Skywalker song. You have Clone Wars Rebels where you can actually glide with your lightsabers. There is also four DLC level packs and did you know these are officially canon to the larger Star Wars timeline? Yeah. Pretty mental. The Phantom Limb explores how C-3PO gets his red arm, they even threw in a reference to Terminator 2 in the level which was hilarious. Now, I never ever ever would have thought a level pack would have made it onto the list. That being said, Poe's Quest for Survival is a really shocking DLC level. This isn't even an exaggeration, the level has a total of 3 minutes of gameplay. Now hey hey, it's not always about how long it lasts. It's more about the experience yet again. As I mentioned earlier, this is canon to Star Wars and the level's entire story is regarding how Poe escapes Jakku after crash landing there. The level contains a vehicle chase which is fine and then you end up in... Blowback Town. That is the stupidest name for a town I have ever heard. Do people blow on each other's backs there or am I just going crazy? Once you arrive into Blowback Town, you simply do a shootout and then enter a cantina and then rescue Oin Goss. Generally, I was so annoyed with this level compared to the other DLC levels. It just lacked a lot of creativity. The characters included are nothing special either. You have Paul in a different shirt, Naka Lit, Struss clan leader and member, and then Oin Goss. I mean, let's just take the Phantom Limb for example. This is one of my favourite DLC levels, battling these ugly spiders as a gonk is epic, and not to forget his noble sacrifice. Gary the Gonk will forever be a hero. To say you have to pay for this DLC, Paul's Quest for Survival has a really bad DLC level, and the characters are very bland. Oh, would you look, there's a LEGO brick in my boot. At number 7 is the Wild West DLC pack from LEGO Movie. What? This DLC pack nearly beat Poe's quest for survival, however, I did decide it was slightly worse. You see, partner, you only get a total of four characters in this DLC, which is really underwhelming and slightly abysmal to be fair, because they're nothing special. You have Odd Ollie, who just has a regular revolver, same goes for Wild Will, then you have Suds Backwash, yeah, and not to forget Root Babe Bell. This may seem crazy crazy, but the best thing about them is the name of the characters. All of these should have been in the base game. The only unique character is Wild Will, simply because he spins his head when jumping. Seriously, that is it. Lego Movie 1 isn't that great of a Lego game looking back, and I personally believe one of the best features in this game is the pants. Luckily, the Wild West pack adds three new pants, and if it wasn't for the pants, this DLC would have been even higher on the list. You get the Jack the Rabbit pants which make your character constantly bounce up and down, granted it gets annoying after a few minutes but you get a laugh from it at least. Prospector pants doubles your studs and then you have hot pants which are just pants on fire. Now you may not know this but there is technically a free secret DLC in Lego Movie 1. Kinda, on which you get Johnny Thunder as a playable character. Oh man, I love Johnny Thunder. So there you go, if you put in these codes, you can unlock a total of five secret characters in this game alongside five extra pair of pants. This secret DLC kinda is a lot better than the Wild West pack, and I mean a lot better. 
coming in at number six, you better call Saul. No, 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 the Avengers. Oh, yes, it's the Civil War DLC from Lego Marvel Avengers. You didn't see that coming. This pack was added as a bonus to commemorate the release of Civil War at the time. There is a huge problem with this pack, that being how it is not included in the season pass. So the question is, is this pack worth it as a standalone DLC? No. The characters included are Agent 13, Captain America, Mark 46, Iron Man, Crossbones, Bucky, Wanda, Falcon, War Machine, and Black Panther. All of these in their Civil War attire. As expected, they are all just simply reskins. And I am totally fine with this, it's just it isn't included in the season pass. At least TT Games allowed us to get the Spider-Man Civil War DLC for free outside of the season pass. Annoyingly, Mark 46 Iron Man is separate from the main Iron Man in this game and he doesn't even appear on the suit selection screen, which really frustrates me. Then there is Black Panther, who has a slightly different stance from his other variations. Seriously, that is kind of like the only unique thing about this DLC. One of my favourite features about this LEGO game was the team-up abilities, but this DLC completely ruins them. Because if you use the Civil War variations of the characters, you only can perform the basic boring slam attack. Like I mentioned earlier, I am fine with the reskins, and if it was included in the season pass, it might not have made it onto the list. Coming in at number 5, what does Bilbo Baggins hate? Bad DLC. But Bilbo Baggins does love a good old lightsaber. Thank you, On a Saber, for sponsoring today's video. On a Saber's lightsabers are just incredible, and with Jedi Survivor around the corner, why not grab yourself a replica of Cal Kestis' lightsaber? And if you already have a saber, why not grab yourself this incredible looking scabbard? Which you can store your lightsaber in. If you want to pick up any of Orna Saber's lightsabers, use this code here, which will give you a cheeky little discount. Thank you, Orna Saber, for sponsoring today's video. Anyway, back over to Middle Earth. We have the side quest character pack from LEGO Hobbit. This pack to me just feels so random. And well, it is to be honest. Now, I know many people haven't actually played LEGO Hobbit, and I do stand that it is one of the most underrated LEGO games. It truly is long forgotten gold. <laughs> To be frank, there isn't much to do for DLC in this game, and that is why I think this DLC is so random. You have Saruman Day off. Seriously, yes. I mean, as much as it is funny, why? Saruman be out here telling people life moves pretty fast sometimes. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you'll miss it. Some of you may have got that reference. Gideon is extremely generic and is heavily overshadowed by other bow wielding characters such as Legolas. As Legolas has agility and even Killy the Dwarf is miles better because he has super strength. Ah, this may seem harsh, but what is the point in being? Give you. The Lady Dwarf is amazing, you've got to love the beard, smacking orcs with a frying pan, and what is great about her is how she can team up with other dwarves. The Dwarven Soldier unfortunately cannot, and I really love the appearance of this character, but he doesn't have any useful abilities nor special attacks. Finally, you have the River Troll, who is just a reskin of the other trolls and a rideable elf. I did tell you this pack was random. Compared to the big little character pack, which included Baby Smaug and Baby Gimli, this DLC just felt like it was thrown together for the sake of it. Even the Mithril Weapon DLC was better. Talking about Mithril Weapons, that is one feature everyone loved about LEGO Lord of the Rings and LEGO Hobbit. Getting to dress your character up in ridiculous looking armour, then you have all the silly weapons such as the spider bombs, croissant slingshots, the disco file, oh just listen to this song, a duck hat. 
right. Then you have B boxing gloves, which when you hit characters makes their head grow bigger. Now, now, don't get any silly ideas. In conclusion, I just felt this DLC was unnecessary and very random with its selection of characters, making it one of the worst. What's up? Making its way just outside of the top three, at number four, it is time to use the Bifrost. <laughs> Whoa, yes, it's the Asgard DLC pack for LEGO Marvel 1. Everyone loves LEGO Marvel superheroes. When I was a kid, the Super Pack was my favourite of the two character expansions. You had Symbiote Spider-Man in there with Thanos and eight other amazing characters. Then there was the Asgard expansion, which in my opinion should be called For the Dark World DLC. To begin with, not many people are a massive fan of For the Dark World. I don't think it is too bad. The DLC includes includes Malekith, who I still can't believe is the ninth Doctor. Outside of his appearance, the only difference between this Malekith and the base game's Malekith is how he can simply go invisible. Curse is a reskin of the base game's version. Now, what angers me so much about this DLC is how Sith, Volstag, Hogan and Fandral all have the exact same fighting animations. Padme Amidala, otherwise known as Jane Foster, makes sense to be in this DLC, though she just feels like any other citizen character. And did you know there is actually a glitch in this game where you can unlock the citizen as a secret playable character? To unlock the citizen, if you play as Jean Grey and activate your force field, then switch to Phoenix and back to Jean Grey, you will begin to transform into the citizen. Bearing in mind it does take some time. Similar to Shazam from the Hero Pack, Odin is the main highlight among all the other characters. If you observe close enough, however, he is just a carbon copy of Loki with electricity. On the plus side, at least you don't need to charge up all the time. That being said, Odin is extremely useful in the earlier stages of the game, having telekinesis and lightning in one character. With LEGO Marvel Avengers, having all of these DLC characters in its base game and Asgard as an explorable city, I do not think this DLC is worthwhile anymore. Even back in the day, I would still argue this DLC wasn't great and it is definitely one of the worst. And from here on, it only gets worse. From a galaxy far, far away, making its way into the top three is... Andor from Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Now look, I am going to be brutally honest here. I ain't a huge fan of the Skywalker Saga's DLC packs. Yeah, they may be a few outliers such as the Mandalorian packs. They are just incredible and some of the DLC characters in this game are broken such as Cad Bane. Look at that fire rate. Andor, unfortunately, is an extremely bland character pack and I'm going to say it, it is rather terrible. <gasps> now gasp all you want, but compared to the others, you can definitely see why. This isn't TT's fault. As much as I loved the show and or there isn't much you can do with the characters. And we already had Andor in the Rogue One DLC. Now you may be asking why I didn't play Summer Vacation here instead. Well, that DLC is hilarious to me and it does grant you access to some extremely powerful powerful characters early on in the game. Whereas Andor, all of the characters are either hero and villain class characters, meaning they all play pretty much the exact same. Bix Colleen being the only outlier here because she is a scavenger. This is one major complaint many people have given the Skywalker saga, on which the class system ruined the uniqueness of certain characters. I do agree in a small way, but I think the class system works very well for for a Star Wars LEGO game, and this probably won't be the case going forward with the future LEGO games. 
Wolves. This may be partially why Andor suffers so much as a DLC, because all the characters pretty much do is shoot, there's nothing that makes them stand out upon each other, making it one of the worst. For number two, I can't say it is incredible at all, we have the Par Family Vacation DLC from LEGO Incredibles. I love LEGO Incredibles and a lot of people haven't even tried this LEGO game, it is so much fun. Especially if you enjoy Pixar movies, you have Woody from Toy Story, Lightning McQueen, wow, Sully, Wally and tons of others. But, 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 the Par Family Vacation Pack to me isn't worth it. Going back to the Summer Vacation DLC, what is great about that DLC is how it grants you access to Palpatine and Vader extremely early on in the game. Then, the Par Family Vacation Pack is just variations for the Incredibles and Frozone, characters you unlock literally after the first few levels. I guess the character models look great, I especially love Bob Paw's shirt, he looks like he's come from Vice City. I'm out of touch, I'm out of touch. Anyway, back to it. Now, this DLC was actually a pre-order bonus, so in terms of a pre-order bonus, I think it is a nice little addition to the character roster. But you can buy it separately, and as a standalone DLC, it just isn't worthwhile unless you really want to go on a summer holiday. Before we move on to number one, if you have gone to enjoy this video, a like would mean the world to me, as it did take quite some time to make, and why not subscribe if you love LEGO games? Talking about that summer holiday, why not visit Jurassic Park, oh yes, the worst ever LEGO game DLC is the LEGO Jurassic World DLC from LEGO Jurassic World. Now, this game has a total of three DLCs which are all very, very bad, so I'm just going to combine them all together. LEGO Jurassic World easily has one of the worst character rosters when excluding the playable dinosaurs. It does kind of baffle me why they did not decide to do a dinosaur DLC pack, instead they added characters that should have been in the base game. And I have to emphasise that, you have Owen Grady Bike, a hot dog vendor, this moustache man, beach dino handler, Timmy Murphy, Paul Kirby, Montana and a few others. Bearing in mind, these are three separate DLCs which all equate to the cost of roughly $5. Other than supporting TT Games, these are single-handedly the worst free DLCs ever. That is across every single LEGO game. Anyone for a hot dog? Thanks for watching.